All right, here we go. Number eight in our college algebra, homework number five. We have a rational function, and they want us to list the domain, the x and y intercepts, graph, and it says be sure to label all asymptotes. All right, so we're going to find a bunch of stuff. So up here in our window in the right-hand corner, let's get started. The first thing that they want to know is what is the domain? So in order to find the domain, first you're going to have to find the restriction. And for a rational function, we know that the denominator cannot be zero. That is the restriction. The, the bottom can't be zero because you can't divide by zero. Okay, so we're going to say x plus 2 cannot be 0. That'll give me the restriction, and then from there I can find the domain. Moving the 2 over gives me negative 2, so that's the restriction. So the domain is the set of all x such that x cannot be negative 2. This notation is called set notation. Now, is that the way they want it? Uh, no, they want interval notation. And so the way this is going to look in interval notation is it's going to be, well, x can be anything from minus infinity up to negative 2, not including negative 2. Skip over to the other side of negative 2 and keep going. Okay, so this notation here, this says everything from negative infinity to infinity, in other words, all real numbers except negative 2. And so let's see if we can input that correctly. Negative infinity to negative 2. And don't forget the U is the glue that sticks the two pieces together. Negative 2 to infinity. See, good. There's interval notation. The x and y intercepts. Okay, so next we need the intercepts. So up here in our window, uh, we know that if you want to find the x-intercepts of a rational function, you need to set the numerator equal to 0. So we're going to say x minus 4 equal to 0. Moving the 4 over gives me x is 4. And so that's the only x-intercept. Let's see here. The x-intercepts are... Okay, so now let's see if there's a y-intercept in order to pick the right answer choice. To find the y-intercept, you need to find f of 0. In other words, you need to take your function and let every x be 0. So that'll be 0 minus 4 over 0 plus 2, which is going to be negative 4 over 2, which divides to make negative 2. So our x-intercept, right here, I think that's going to be answer choice C, because there is an x and a y-intercept. As an ordered pair, the x-intercept is 4 from a 0, and the y-intercept is... 0, comma, negative 2. So don't forget that an x-intercept has a y-coordinate of 0 every time, and a y-intercept has an x-coordinate of 0 every time. All right, next, what does it want? Um, press continue. Find the vertical asymptote. All right, so is there a vertical asymptote? Well, I believe so. Remember, to find a vertical asymptote, you set the denominator equal to zero and solve. So if I set that denominator equal to zero and solve, let's go down here at the bottom. Uh, what are we looking for? We're looking for vertical asymptote is going to be x plus 2 equal to 0. Moving the 2 over gives me x is negative 2. And that should be our vertical asymptote. Notice they already give me the x equal. 
So I just need to put negative 2. And what else? Okay, now the horizontal asymptote. All right, so this is the fun one. This requires some consideration, okay? Because to find a horizontal asymptote, you have to compare the degree of the numerator or the degree of the top to the degree of the bottom, the degree of the denominator, okay? So let's go back to our function, and we can see that the degree is the biggest power on any variable. So for the numerator, the biggest exponent on any variable is 1, so the degree of the top is 1. The biggest exponent on any variable in the denominator is 1, so the degree of the bottom is 1. And so what that says, it says that the degree of the top equals the degree of the bottom, and that implies that the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals a over b. Now what the, are a and b? Well, a is the lead coefficient of the numerator. So the number in front of the x up top, that is a. And the number in front of the x in the bottom, that is b. Do you see those are the lead coefficients? They're the numbers in front of the letters that had the biggest powers. And so a and b are both 1. So our horizontal asymptote should be y equals 1. Whew, that's a lot of work for that guy. y equals 1. <clears throat> and I didn't lie to you. Yay. All right, so then it says click to select and enter your answer. Where is the next part of the answer? Click to select. What, did I miss something? Oh, I'm sorry, oblique. Find the oblique asymptote. All right, so fun fact, if you have a horizontal asymptote, you cannot have an oblique asymptote. It's like one of these exists and the other one doesn't. So if you don't have a horizontal asymptote, then you could have an oblique. And if you do have a horizontal asymptote, then you can't have an oblique. All right, now for the graph. Ooh, okay, now for the graph. So now what we're going to do over here in our window where we're working is we're going to put all of this information together and we're going to make ourselves a hand-drawn graph. Vertical asymptote, x equal negative 2. Let's go ahead and lay that guy down. Right there. Horizontal asymptote, y equals 1. There's the horizontal asymptote. What about x and y intercepts? Y intercept negative 2, X intercept 4. 1, 2. Y intercept negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. X intercept is 4. So here's what I can tell for sure is that this graph is going to have to go through the Y intercept and the X intercept, but it's also going to have to approach the asymptotes as it gets closer to them. So that's the first part of the graph. Now, what I don't know is I don't know what's happening to the left of the vertical asymptote. And to figure that out, the only way really to do that is to do a table of values. Now I need to pick an x that is to the left of the vertical asymptote. And the vertical asymptote is at negative 2, so maybe I want to pick negative 3. That would be right there. Negative 3 would be right to the left right to the left. It would be just to the left of the vertical asymptote. And then I need to find the y for that. So we're going to calculate f of negative 3, which means we're going to plug negative 3 in for each x into the function and work that out. That's going to give negative 7 over negative 1, which is 7. And so at negative 3, I'm up at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's way the flip up here. And then that tells me now that this graph is going to do something like this. Again, it's going to have to curve in this area and approach the asymptotes as it goes. And if I wanted to, I could pick another negative x just to make sure. Let's see here, negative 3. 
negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Let's do negative 7 just to get pretty far out here and see what's going on, okay? So f of negative 7 is going to give me negative 7 minus 4 over negative 7 plus 2. 7 and 4 is 11. 7, 6, 5, that's negative 5. Negative over a negative makes a positive. And 11 fifths is a little bit more than 2. So let's see, what is that, 2.25? You can use your calculator if you want to check that. So at negative 7, we're going to be at 2.25. So something about here, something like that. Yeah, so that shows that I'm pretty close. All right, so now let's see if we can pick a graph that looks something like this. Let's see here, vertical. Oh, okay, so it can't be A. Notice the horizontal asymptote is at negative 1, not 1. It could be B. Okay, it can't be C because the vertical asymptote is on the wrong side of the y-axis. It can't be D. So by process of elimination, it has to be B. And before I click the check, I'm going to go to Desmos and prove it. I want to prove it. So X minus 4 over X plus 2. Uh, whoops, plus 2, enter. And then can you see that over here if I zoom home? And if I lay down my asymptotes, x equals, what was the asymptote? Negative 3, negative 2. And the y equals 1. Can you see that? Look at that. So my graph fits nicely up here, like I showed it up here. And it comes through. Look, I can even prove the x and y intercepts there. And so that, look at the asymptotes there. Look at the asymptotes for b. That proves that that is correct. Oh, man, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the uh, comment section below. Or you can text me. And thanks for watching.